Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you the basics of using the blend tool in Illustrator. Let's get started. So here we have a bunch of different shapes and lines. Now let's say I wanted to create an even blend between this red square and this blue circle. It would take a good amount of work to draw the actual shape, create the gradient, and fill it in. The blend tool lets us automate that entire process. So if I select the red square and the blue circle, all I have to do is come up and click Object, Blend, Make. And right away you'll see that it automatically creates a blend between the two objects. So if I select that blend and go back up to Object, Blend, Blend Options, you'll see the different options that we have. Right now we have spacing set to smooth color. That's why you get an even gradient between the red square and the blue circle. But what if I chose specified steps? Illustrator will automatically select the number of steps it takes to create a smooth gradient. But let's say I change that number to 5. Now you'll see that our blend creates shapes and colors in between our square and our circle. So it gradually transforms between the two based on the number of steps we've specified. So again, if I change that to 3, you'll see the difference that it makes. Next you'll find Specified Distance. This is helpful if you want to specify an exact distance between each object in your blend. So if I set the specified distance to 3 inches, each object is going to be 3 inches away from the next. The orientation doesn't come into effect yet because our blend is going in a straight line. So I'm going to change this back to Specified Steps and set it to 20 and hit OK. This doesn't just work for shapes either. Here we have one line that's 15 points in width, and then a curvy line that's 5 points in width. So if I select both of these lines and choose Object, Blend, Make, you'll see that it automatically blends them smoothly. If I go back and choose Object, Blend, Blend Options, I can then change it to Specified Steps, and you'll see the difference that it makes. Not only does it choose colors in between these two shapes, but it will gradually change the shape of the line as it moves between the blend. Again, you can also change it to specify distance and choose a distance between each object in your blend. So I'm going to set this one back to specified steps and leave it at 20 and hit OK. If I select my first blend and also select my spiral shape, I can go up and choose Object, Blend, Replace Spine. And what that's going to do is put one of my objects at each end of this spiral and then it will use that spiral to blend them. Now if I go back and choose Object, Blend, Blend Options, you'll see that the orientation is set to Align to Page, so each of these squares and circles and everything in between is aligned vertically. If I change it to Follow the Path, you'll see that each item rotates as it blends through the spiral. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now if I press A to select the Direct Selection tool, I can choose either one of my objects at the beginning or end of my blend. So I'm going to choose this blue circle and come up and change the color to black. You'll see that my blend automatically updates to reflect that change. I can also click anywhere along my blend to choose the spine. So if I select one point on the spine and move it, my blend automatically adjusts to that new line. Blending objects is a great way to get patterns and all kinds of other cool effects. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.